Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host as always, Matt Johnson with Justina Spirito. Thank you so much for joining me again. You're welcome. And as always, we're here every other Thursday. Yay. Yeah, we try to get here when we can on Thursdays, <laughs> starting at four o'clock. And we're talking to Hawaii's uh, local food, farmers, foodies, anybody who cares about Hawaii's local food system. Um, as always, you can join the conversation by tweeting us at, at ThinkTechHI, shown here below, bottom of the screen. And you can also call in. We always love those people calling love in it. and asking those questions. Love it. Just dial us at 415-871-2474. So, Justine, who do we have on the show today? Uh, I want to introduce you to Lauren Shoup today. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hey, Lauren. So, we've wanted Lauren on the show for uh, since the show started, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren has been a part of our food system here on Oahu and from Big Island originally, um, played a, a multitude of roles and introduce things into um, our food system here. So it's really exciting to kind of get the background of the business you started and then the partnership uh, that we've talked about between um, Hawaii Farmers Market, Lauren's Business, and Oahu Fresh, which is the Oahu Food Hub, which mm. we mentioned. And so it's kind of time to, to check in with you guys. You have a lot of Yeah, we kind of talk about them a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's so nice to actually have you here yeah. to respond. That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so we definitely want to get your background, what's new, uh, your new products, and then I'm excited to hear from you guys of the new occupants in the Food Hub and what's going on. Right on. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. So, yeah, why don't you talk a little bit about your background and how uh, Hawaii Farmers Market came about, because that's kind of like your first real project you got into. Yeah, so uh, I was born and raised over on the Big Island, um, grew up there, graduated high school, went to San Diego for a few years. Wasn't really my style. Um, so what? Yeah, what? I just school? <laughs> school wasn't your style. Yeah, I didn't, oh, okay. uh, I didn't, didn't really do the whole school thing. <laughs> yeah, but I moved back. To, uh, I was just like a, I guess, a natural born entrepreneur. So I had a lot of ideas that I wanted to do in the mainland. But it was one of those deals. Like if I start something up there, I'll have to be there for an, an extended period of time. You know, five, 10, 15 years. Who knows? But I just couldn't see myself living there for that long. So I thought Oahu would be a good place between Big Island. You know, it's a little country there. So Oahu, a little more city. Um, plus, I did live here. Uh, uh, during high school for a short period of time, went to Puno for a little bit. Um, so yeah, I knew Oahu and I really liked to have a lot of friends here, so I decided to come back um, just so I could start. I didn't know what I was going to do, mm -hmm. I had no idea. I had, um, at the time, I actually thought I was going to be like some kind of a personal trainer or something, but obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> but, um, All right, so yeah. school didn't yeah. work out, yeah. personal training didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I moved back here and um, well, actually while I was in the mainland, my dad was talking to a farmer over on the Big Island. What that farmer did was he, he had a farm growing like uh, fruits and he would make jams and jellies mm. and what he would do he'd come to Oahu every other week to sell them at farmers markets and my dad was like whoa that's pretty crazy I mean you're doing airfare you're getting a hotel room your storage like car rental like all this stuff just to do a farmers market that's pretty crazy and the guy's like yeah you know it's worth it, it gets my name out there I do a couple stores and sampling and I mean I was like whoa maybe my son could just do it for you and I'm like and uh, you know my dad told me about the opportunity I was like oh, I'll take him up on it so I met the guy over on the big island he kind of told me about his farm and his products and uh, then uh, he flew over here with me to Oahu to show me one of the farmers market he does, uh, which is the KCC farmers market. It's one of the bigger and better ones here in Hawaii, and um, it kind of all just started there. So I started bringing over his products, starting at one farmers markets, and then you know you get asked, hey, you want to do this market? Yeah, I'm sure I'll try that market too. So then it kind of so everything kind of went to the wayside, like all that training stuff I was going to do and anything <laughs> else, any other plans I had. Um, but anyways, I started to expand farmers markets. So I had this one product, just jams and jellies, um, brought over from the Big Island, and then I would just, you know, I went to 12 markets a week, and then mm -hmm. eventually we had a kiosk at Moana, and then just a whole bunch of different stuff happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the kind of a cool thing was I'd get other people from the Big Island asking me to uh, sell their products as well, mm -hmm. too, like macadamia nuts, there is a salt company, they make smoked sea salts, there was teas, um, so there's, a, there's chocolate guys, there's tons of other companies, yeah. because they saw how how good it worked between me and this guy selling jam, so I mean, uh, but it is pretty cool, so basically, um, my company is far
farm to market Hawaii. So we bring products from outer islands like Kauai, Maui, Big Island here to Oahu to be sold because it's a lot bigger market. Um, obviously, there's more tourists. Mm -hmm. And then it, it also took me a couple years to find who my market was. So it's not necessarily locals all the time. It's uh, like Japanese tourists and just uh, and general tourists alike. Um, so because, uh, you know, I was trying to do all these local markets with jam, but it's just the jams, you know, it's really expensive products, a lot of these local uh, products. And then obviously tourists, they love to give gifts as well. So then I started getting into more of the, the tourist markets. And that's where things started really happening. Mm -hmm. That's when the business really took off and we could bring in more products and start moving a lot of things. Uh, but yeah, so now we, I don't even know how many different farms we deal with, but you know, like a handful or a couple handful, I guess. But uh, yeah, there's a, a lot of uh, farms we deal with, so it's pretty cool. Um, one thing I want to, uh, it reminded me, uh, you mentioned your dad. So your dad is a very entrepreneurial guy too. I remember a story you telling me before about um, like one year for your birthday, he gave you like a GT license. Or when yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. graduated from high school, yeah, something like exactly, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for my, instead of, you know, graduation president from high school, my yeah. dad gave me my first business. So like a, you know, a, a GT uh, license, um, just like a, a general basic, excise tax license. Yeah, general, yeah. And then um, just a, uh, you know, business basic, you know, or a basic business license, you know, just a good business. And I'm like, ah, oh, that was pretty cool. And, you know, I came up with a name for it. And then, um, but that was, you know, when I went to California, so I didn't really use it for three years. Mm -hmm. And then when it came back, I instantly started using because I was doing the jam thing. Because that was just generic, like, Lauren Shoe. Uh, it, it was or? called, <laughs> it was called Old Soul Tree LLC. It's like O O L D S O U L tree. I don't okay. know. I just came out with it one day. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then, but That's yeah, I did really not. Deep. Yeah, yeah. Are, are but, you an old soul? Is that? Yeah, that was an old soul. Oh, okay. so I was like, oh, old soul tree? I don't know. Yeah. So uh, anyways, yeah, I did that. And then, um, yeah, I actually used that. I was doing business under that name for like two years. Mm -hmm. And then I switched to um, Lauren Shubin Associates. It's DBA Farm to Market Hawaii. So, cool. yeah, so that's kind of how that worked out. But um, then it expanded. I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But yeah, now there's like three or four different companies, which uh, Matt and I have a company together. Uh, I do like a local uh, fishing company where we uh, sell like seafood, like a local seafood company where we sell like shrimps and fish. So, so yeah, so let, let's kind of um, back up with that a little bit. So, so you're doing the farmer's markets. You're mm -hmm. bringing all the products from uh, neighbor islands and it just started expanding. It worked out well with the jams and then the macadamia nuts and all these other products mm -hmm. but then you started seeing other opportunities outside of that and that's where the the fish uh, yes. came from. Yeah so what was happening was there's these guys on sm um, small hand line boats so, so there's big long lines and there's short line boats and they it's a whole other story but basically they catch different types of fish like the I mean it's the same species of fish but the way they catch them and the timing and the size are completely different uh, so the short line boats would catch smaller fish which were didn't really sell well in the auction so yeah. local people wanted to buy them you know 30 pound ahi 20 pound ahi you know smaller ones um, so we started up this business where it's called Nimitz fish market and we had a food truck like fully permitted we had a spot for it and everything and we go down to these small boats and buy the fish directly off them so not only are the fishermen getting a better price because I'm paying them a much higher price mm -hmm. than they would have gotten the auction then I can turn around and sell it to uh, local families that are like some of these people are on food stamps I mean this is a big deal so when you buy like a 20, 30 pound fish, it's not cheap. It's gonna be like over a hundred bucks, you know, yeah. but it feeds your family for days. And most of these people that came had like five, six, eight, you know, people in their family. So it's mm -hmm. pretty cool to sell one fish, feed this whole family for a good price. It's like really, really good meat, super healthy for you, fresh. I mean, literally I was, um, I mean, it's, we, we, our slogan was local fish for local people. And it was kind of cool. I mean, literally back my truck up to the boat, buy the fish, drive maybe a quarter mile down the road and sell it. So it's like you couldn't get any fresher. Like, there's just no way. So it, that was that was pretty fun. And we still, um, so that business, we don't do as much right now, or we're still kind of working on our, um, trying to get the supply, because it's really hard to deal with these small boats, just in pricing and weather yeah. and hurricanes, and you know, it's a whole host of uh, things. Uh, but we still sell shrimp, though. So these local caught shrimp, which are ama ebi, we call them, Hawaiian deep sea shrimp. Shrimp. There's these really, really big red shrimp. Um, you can eat them sashimi style. They're super good, just raw. Uh, the stuff you get like in a really expensive like Japanese restaurants. But we still sell those at the farmers market. And people love those. It's 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 a really popular item. It's really cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 um, 
Um, okay. So I, I want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still there. Yeah. I mean, it's great to see how you've expanded the products that you're working with, and it's nice to know that you've also been able to like hire other folks to to help you out. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's a, one true test of an entrepreneur starting a business is then you know being able to provide that opportunity to others. Yeah. And so then, why don't you talk about what interested you in the the hub and partnering with Matt on that? Yeah. So well, I'll get the sorry, get the first point you're saying with the hiring people. I love that. Like that's like a super big thing to me because like now it's like I have like all these people that pretty much depend on work from me. You know, like they don't. Mm -hmm. It's not that they can't get another job somewhere else, but it's just like you know cash and you know, feed their family and stuff like that. So it's like I'm helping these other people like with jobs, and that's that's amazing. Like that's the yeah. whole point. Like you know, it's like I just love creating things. You know, so it's like really fun for me to like. I don't know, create a situation like the Nimbus Fish Market thing. Like, even though it didn't do extremely well, it was like really cool. It gave some people jobs and this and that. And now the farmers market thing, like, yeah, right now we're talking. We I'm doing four farmers market. As we're speaking right now, I got four farmers markets going on wow. on this island. You know, so it's like, cool. and you need people at every single one of them. Yeah. You know, so it's like I'm, so, you know, so it's that's at least like five, two six people job. per market. Yeah, it's like one one or two people per market, pretty mm -hmm. much. So it's like, you know, it's like six people working right now. It's like that's pretty cool. It's, you know, that's I don't know. I love that kind of stuff. So I really like creating those things. But yeah, so Matt and I uh, met a long time ago, but um, uh, when I guess I was still kind of doing training stuff at CrossFit, because it's a CrossFit master here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started on that, okay? We're going to forget all about this yeah. other stuff and get into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, Matt and I met a long time ago, but we both needed a warehouse at the same time, and then I always had the idea of, um, I was one of the commercial kitchen to rent out to people. Like, you know, of course I could use it myself. At the time, I didn't have any product that I needed or, or any idea that I needed for myself right away, but I always thought like, hey, all these people need a kitchen. They might as well work out of my kitchen, you know, mm -hmm. instead of having, I don't know where they're going, but, you know, doing it out of their house or what they're mm -hmm. doing. But I'd rather them, you know, I can make money off of it and, you know, they're all under one roof. is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Matt and I came together and he also had the, he's the one that had the food hub idea. So he's always had that. So it's kind of like, you know, pretty similar ideas coming together. And then, you know, it started really slow and, we, you know, you're just building and building and building. You talk to more people and it all kind of like really comes together. But, yeah, now we're like really going with a lot of different tenants and big tenants. Um, but you know it's kind of a struggle the whole time, but we're really getting it done, and we're doing it on you know a tight budget, but it's still working out really, really well. And who are your newest tenants? Uh, the newest tenants we have Ai Mahuahi, I believe. Um, uh, that's how you say it, yeah. And then uh, they're like tarot guys, so they do like poi and um, just raw tarot, cook tarot, um, do a whole host of things like that. And then uh, we have um, our Keith, Keith's Cookies is one of our newer mm -hmm. ones, and he, he's awesome. The guy's awesome. His name is Brent. He's a real great guy. I've known him from the farmers markets for years. Um, he's really really cool. Um, takes care of the place. We got um, Kahala Fresh moving in. Kahala mm -hmm. Fresh, which you can see all over the place. I think Nordstrom's, like uh, Down to Earth, Whole Foods. They do What's like that? I don't they, think I've heard they of do it. like granolas and pancake mixes, and yeah. they do flavored macadamia nuts, and they do all, a whole host of items. And so to sell that kind of product, what like granola and stuff, how much local does that need to be or, or how does that fit into the... Uh, I mean, they're trying to use as much local fruit as possible. Okay, so, I mean, so obviously we can't do everything local. Yeah. That's just almost impossible. But, um, yeah, I know they're all using local fruit. And then, you know, obviously they're making it here. So that's a big deal, too. You know, again, they're creating jobs for people. So everyone that we're, you know, they're all creating jobs, too. So it's, it, it's pretty cool. I really like that aspect of it. Yeah, because now how many businesses are like working on the food hub? I want to say like uh, 12 count. or something. I don't know. We have like catering guys that, you know, use it every once in a while when they have catering jobs. We have uh, a sweet caramel guy. Yeah, caramel guy. Um, there's like a food truck here or there. And then what kind of cross-pollination have you seen between the tenants, if any? Um, well, with Matt's business, Wahoo Fresh, a lot of them will order uh, fresh produce through him to use in their catering jobs or, you know, through making their products and things like that. Also, like, distribution. Again, Matt, uh, Matt can take out products for them and distribute to stores. Um, I can help by, you know, trying out products at farmer's markets to see if it works or not, you know, because that's a, it's a really good thing. It's like, like could, you create this product, whatever it may be, but it may we may like it, but who knows if the general public will like it. And and that being said, like, farmer's markets are a lot different from retail, too, so it's, it is a definitely a, a whole other animal. So mm -hmm. if it works in farmer's markets, absolutely no, like, guarantee that it'll work in a retail setting as well. It's com They're completely yeah. different. Because um, at farmer's markets, people love a story. Like, they want to start, like, oh, did you make this? 
like where yeah, do they grow? Yeah, it's got to be like, your thing. Yeah, that yeah. Selling. So it's a whole other thing. We need thing. to go to a break. Yeah. I didn't. I couldn't really hear. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think. I think so, something in my ear was saying we gotta go to a break. Um, yeah. Uh, we're gonna take Sorry a quick. To <laughs> we're gonna take break? a quick break yeah. and come back and hang out some more. All right. Welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. I'm your co-host, Justini Spiritu. This is your co our co-host, Matthew Johnson. Mm -hmm. Today, we Not have it. Lauren Shoup, who is co-founder of the Oahu Food Hub. Mm -hmm. He has a couple other businesses and products. So we just kind of got into your history and how you kind of came into your own with your business, um, caught yep. up a little on the food. Hub. Not school, not fitness. Not school, yeah. not CrossFit. Food. Food. At least yeah. CrossFit brought you guys together. Yeah. <laughs> You'll always have CrossFit. Yeah. <laughs> you knocked me over and I was messed so up. So then you're kind of talking about all the tenants and kind of some of the cross pollination that happen. And so if you want to talk about your newest product, that kind of seems like a result of that cross pollination as well. Yeah. With the yeah. So it's, again, uh, Matt was helping with this project years ago. Um, he started, uh, or he helped to get a a uh, breadfruit farm put together. Uh, so I get a grant going for that and get it planted up in Mililani. And then um, we went to a function about a year ago now, actually, well, it's kind of time flies, but a year ago. And they're saying, it's like, okay, well, we got all this breadfruit. What are we going to do with it? And that's kind of, everyone's like, oh, I'll do this, do that, whatever. And um, um, at, this is, anyways, I saw that no one in Hawaii is making hummus. Like, there's no, you can't go to the store and buy a local hummus. You just, it doesn't happen. Like, unless you go to, like, a specific restaurant or, like, a, maybe a down-to-earth, they'll have yeah. their own one, but it's garbanzo beans, and it's very basic, um, but there's no, like, general hummus company in Hawaii. I'm like, well, that's pretty interesting. Like, I want to do that. So about a couple years ago, two years ago, I started making my own hummus out of garbanzo beans, but I make it with beets or sweet potato or jalapeno, habanero, avocado, and they're really, really good, but it just wasn't local enough for me to take to a farmer's market, so I just didn't really pull the trigger on it. It was just kind of a thing I made for my friends and whatever. Uh, but then while I was up at this uh, conference, I made a, uh, met a couple people from the Big Island, and they had a breadfruit hummus recipe. And I was like, whoa, that changes the whole game. You know, I was like, that's, that's exactly what I've been looking for. So they, they were kind of making it, and then... Um, I just decided to go for it. I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll try it out, you know. So I started using all the flavors and all the stuff I was doing before. I just mm -hmm. swapped the garbanzo beans for the ulu. That's basically what, what is, what's going on here. So now I came up with this company, Ulu Mono Inc., and then we make hummuses out of breadfruit. No so garbanzo beans. Zero garbanzo beans. So it's all, um, so it's all uh, from either this island or Big Island. I actually got breadfruit from, from Kauai before. So it's awesome because we're using stuff grown here. It's not phone here. It's grown here, you know, mm -hmm. so it's pretty pretty awesome to do something like that. So, obviously, not all the ingredients are 100% Hawaiian right. or anything like that, you know, but the main ingredient, breadfruit, which is like 90% of the product, is from here. So it's But even, great. like, the feature flavors are kind of distinctly, mm. those are the flavors you see in Hawaii. The yeah, turmeric, like turmeric, turmeric yeah, jalapenos. Beets, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely Okinawan sweet potato. That one's really cool because you get that really nice purple. And the thing that's cool about our hummus is, is like, it's all natural coloring, but the color is just crazy. They're super, mm. super bright. So But it's all vibrant. natural. Yeah, they're like the beet one is really, really broad, vibrant, but there's like no red dye or anything like that in there. Um, and that's been an interesting lure for children too. Oh, but yeah. I've noticed love, at the yeah. farmers yeah. market, like I always recommend the sweet potato and the beets. Yeah, the they just like want to try. They say, "I want the red one, I want the purple yeah. one." Yeah. Yeah. They just want to try, yeah. and then they honestly they like it. Like we have a whole testimonial page on there, and you'll see little kids like, "Oh, I have it for my lunch every day," and like you know the moms pack it, and it's like super cool. 
So uh, we're just we're doing farmers markets right now, but we're trying to get in the stores like in the next couple of weeks when we have all our labels done and barcodes and all that fun stuff. Uh, so you can look forward to seeing those in stores pretty soon. And this is your first product yourself. Yeah, yeah. You've so been, this is yeah. So everything else I've been selling, slinging mm -hmm. everyone else's. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. this is the Lauren show. Yeah, yeah, the Lauren show. Yeah. So this is the first one I actually you know came up with. A fair amount of the recipe and like. Well, I want to ask you about that. Did you have to pay them for the recipe? Well, it's like. Did you buy, I mean, buy it from the them? one they gave me was not what you see there. Like it's not. Oh, okay. It's was, the. Oh, it's like, base. It's like a base, but it's not They've modified it. Oh yeah, no. I mean that. I mean theirs is good, but it's just like they gave me like a, a basic one, and then I took that and I ran with what I was doing before, which was all the flavors like yeah. be, like beets mm -hmm. and sweet potatoes and jalapenos, yeah. and then kind of made it into what it is today. So it's kind of took an evolution from what they gave me, but yeah, it is from uh, Hawaii uh Co I forget their name. Hawaii producers, uh, Hawaii Ulu producers, I think the, the name, Hawaii co op, something like that. Yeah. Anyways, something they're like that. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those are the ones that gave you the recipe. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was really cool. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, our slogan is like increasing the uh, production and consumption of uh, Ulu in Hawaii. So that's, that's what we kind of stand for in that company. Yeah. And that's what's cool with kind of tying back to the, the food hub, and that's kind of the basis of, of the whole purpose of that is, is having that, that foundation of local food products coming into this physical warehouse and then having the means to process it and then having outlets like the farmers market that Lauren's going to CSA restaurants that we're going to and um, it's neat I think we also haven't even really had a chance to even do that even more of that cross-pollination with all the different tenants because we've just been so busy putting it all together, mm -hmm. bringing people in and kind of organizing and feeling how it all works. And where I'm getting excited is now thinking ahead like, okay, how do we have more, because some of the tenants in the building don't even know each other yet because mm -hmm. they're just literally just everyone's just kind of running around doing their own thing. So now I think it's time for a pauhana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time for try a to have a number of food of pauhanas. <laughs> yeah. It just ends up at yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's up being like cream. our friends, yeah. and we get a little carried away. Yeah. The keg shows up, yeah. um, but having more of those kind of things and workshops and 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 there has already been some you know interaction already, but I think there's just so much more once everybody realizes what everybody's doing. Yeah. Um, it has more of that interaction. I think it's just going to take off even more in terms of the community that that's in that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we have a good uh, set of core tenants right now, and then like exactly what Matt said. Now it's just kind of like go time. Now it's like we're really like, hey, we got a set. Now we can like, what do we really want to do, and what can we like produce and get out there and like new products and you know keep yeah. it all here. So it's yeah, because like Lauren and I are still figuring out. Oh, the electric just went out. You know, so how do we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're still kind of yeah. focused on some of the core basics. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, refrigerators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it can't be like, hey guys, let's all get together and come up with some new product ideas. It's like, hey, get the power working, yeah. and then we can talk. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah, um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of more potential with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and another note, it's something that you guys have talked about more in developing is even people reaching out that aren't a tenant, that don't have a business yet, and they say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, do you have this? I've gotten a couple of those calls that I've tried to like field over to you guys. Someone's asking me about lemons, and I'm like, well, what do you want it for? And they're like, well, I want to like try out this thing, mm -hmm. and I've tried to send them over to you guys at the hub, and almost, even if you're not a tenant, but that, that kind of incubator space for food businesses is still a possibility there or, or yeah okay. absolutely I and mean, it's good because like you know Matt and I have seen a lot of stuff especially in the local food environment so it's like if someone comes with to me with an idea I can quickly tell them like one either is good or bad or you're gonna hit this kind of a struggle or you're not gonna find that product here or you know something of that sort or someone's already doing it you know so something like that so yeah. um, it, it's really good just get like I, I like I know I love helping everyone out so if they come to me like hey Lauren I want to do this I'm like well not so fast I mean there's you know there's like ten other guys doing it. Yeah. It's it, an interesting compliment else. to what's offered at yeah. like UH in the ag business program mm -hmm. with Stephen Chang. It's a little, you know, he's has the whole business thing down, but for you guys to really have that experience in the yeah. in the market is mm -hmm. cool for folks. Yeah. And yeah, I think it is a neat combination of we have like established businesses that are like kind of like uh, Keith's Cookies where mm -hmm. he's actually moved out of the shared use kitchen and we're developing his his own kitchen cuz he's just really grown. Who's that? Uh, Keith's Cookies, Brent. 
Oh, Cookie not, Monster. Not Keith, yeah, Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. And uh, so kind of he's established doing his own thing, but then we still have that space for, like uh, Kristen showed up yesterday, where she has an idea of ra actually raising crickets and making a Kristen cricket flower. Kristen Jameson? Jameson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah. So like Lauren was saying, like we can kind of provide some of that, you know, feedback right away. But like, yeah, that's a good idea, or I don't think it's going to work. Cricket market is saturated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, how about the cockroach market? How about yeah. you try that? Yeah. We got plenty of those. Of got plenty of those. <laughs> yeah, that cockroach mongoose problem. <laughs> if you're really going to yeah. take off. Um, but yeah, and that, and so those kind of things that, and and we're learning more too about like Lauren's doing the ulu hummus like product development, packaging, labeling, um, all those kind of things that I think eventually we'll be able to provide uh, an incubation for that as well as we get better at it. Um, so hopefully, yeah, a one-stop kind of shop for uh, any new local food product. Yes, yeah, that's pretty, yeah, pretty cool because, um, yeah, like Matt can use the same containers I can use and we can, and we can all use the same like label maker or like uh, graphic artists and like there's just so many things you need in business and it's like really hard to find every single one of them. So it's like, it's like, hey, use one, how do you like it? Did it work out? Good? Okay, well, yeah. maybe I'll use it too. You know, so there's a lot of things like, you know, like the Cookie Monster guy, like he helps out a lot. I always ask him questions like, how'd you do yeah. that? Or like, what do you think about yeah, this? Yeah, and, and Gooch, when we're working on the baba ganoush recipe, yeah. just having like the most like well-known chef in town just walking by as yeah. we're like measuring things and be like can you taste this for us? Yeah. That's he like he showed up yesterday I was making the eggplant parmesan and I just finished it and I put it in a, a container I was like hey Gooch check this out what do you think he's like you owe my two cents I was like <laughs> yeah and he literally picked it up and he just started shaking it and it stuff went flying everywhere he's like see I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I think we, was the hat on yeah, that, the hat was on, and he just wanted to show that the container was too big for the product that you need. Yeah, that's, oh, okay. that's the point he was trying to make, and he mm -hmm. ruined the product that I was getting ready to go deliver. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of funny. But yeah, exactly. Those kind of things are super helpful. Yeah. So we have one minute left. <laughs> Do you want to try to talk about bike share? Uh, Newsflash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think the bike share Hawaii started putting down stations. Yeah. So people will be able to bike to the food hub. <laughs> Not that there's a station near the food hub. Just trying to make a connection. Yeah. People can bike to the food hub and keep going around and come back to uh, the station. Yeah, but it's it's exciting. We're going to have um, 100 stations and 1,000 bikes. First stations started going down in Kakako today, and the system will go live June 28th. So we have talked about ideas with people of bike delivery mm. of CSA bags, maybe, or something, I yeah, think. Yeah. I think there's room for us to collaborate. So next year, we can have this same show format and have more mm -hmm. cross-pollination yeah. of our projects. Yeah. Yeah. So much cross-pollination. I just love it. Cross it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK. Should we wrap so it up? I think that's it for today. Um, we'll see you next, next Thursday.